Well, hello everybody once again. Uh, welcome to the channel. And I have another interesting retro type review uh, for you today. Uh, this is something that I purchased uh, last year. It is a Philips AZ-1007 stereo radio cassette recorder uh, with a CD player on top and it is silver and there are two speakers there one on the other side as I can make out and then you have your cassette front loading deck there in the middle and then of course the CD player is a top loader and you lift there's a little thing there um that you, you you don't need to press a button you pull up on the lid like that there and that's where your cd uh goes into uh this model i think came out around about 1999 um i believe and um it's a very nifty a um, very neat looking device. Um, so what we have here is we'll have a look at some of the functions. I don't know uh, what they all do. I've played around with some of them. I'm not as tacky as maybe some people out there, but anyway, I'll describe what I can. There on the front is the digital a display um of course for your radio frequencies and your cd tracks etc and then below that and beside that there's two round buttons there and then below that below the display and uh, there's one there's some rectangular buttons and then to the right of that there's one uh, sort of circular button and i believe that a lot of those are for rewind fast forward play stop you know for the cd player and then above that are your cassette mechanism transport controls and these are Yes, they would be a bit bigger than a square. Again, they would be rectangular buttons. And from left to right, you got pause, stop, eject, fast forward, rewind, play, and one touch record. And if we press the eject button, oh, that's a very soft eject, which means that it's a pretty uh, good mechanism and then moving on um on the top at the on the very left there uh where let me see where my hand is there's a round knob and that is for volume control and then beside that or behind that rather um, on the front, there is a push switch for what we call bass boost. And then we've got another little toggle switch, uh, which is there. It's a three-way switch for tip, um, radio, and CD, I believe. It's a function switch, I guess, that you would call that. Moving over to the right of the CD player section at the top, again we have a three-way switch there for FM, medium wave and long wave, I would imagine that that would be for. And then again, you have a carrying handle um, as well. And that lifts up and down which enables you to obviously um, to carry the, the device as well. 
I'm just trying to feel around to see if I can remember exactly where the, the headphone socket is on um, this device. Um, because, um, as I say, um, it's been a long time since I've used this uh, with um, any headphones if ever, but um, I can't seem to feel one at the moment. Um, uh, no doubt I will, I will find it. But anyway, what we'll do is we'll turn this around and have a look at the back. And there's a couple of things there. If you pull, if you pull that out. That is your battery compartment. And that just clicks in like that there. And if you lift up the handle, what we have is our telescopic antenna aerial, which pulls out uh, like that there um, in order to give you a better reception and then over here at, on the back or on the right at the bottom you've got your uh where your mains lead figure of eight mains lead um goes in there and uh and then if you go to the middle below the aerial there's a small switch right there i don't know if you can see it or not on camera um it's a two-way selector switch or one-way switch which moves one direction and the other and that um is to tell you that it is ac bias this cassette recorder has ac bias recording um uh, because uh that's what they call a beat switch uh, which means if you're recording from something on a medium wave and uh, you get this clashing whistly sound sometimes whenever the signal clashes from the AC bias coil with the heads, then you can illuminate that by sometimes moving the switch um, while recording. So, yes, this is a very nice device. I picked this up um, at one stage um, on eBay. And it all works extremely well. Sometimes the CD player will skip a bit, uh, but I think it possibly needs maybe a good cleaning um, of some sort. But what I'll do is I'll be back very soon uh, with a little demonstration of how it plays um, and records so I will be back in a moment or two uh, with part two well hello again and welcome back uh, and I was discovering there uh, when I looked at the back of the unit that the headphone socket is actually above the um, uh, the power supply socket it's actually up above uh, there there's like two round sockets one of them looks like a fake it doesn't do anything you can't put anything in it while the other one is a actual headphone 3.5 millimeters jack socket so that's where they are in the back of the unit up above the uh, figure of eight socket so glad we discovered that Okay, so now for our little test, I'm going to put a cassette in here. Wrong side, so we'll have to turn it over. Now that's interesting because this unit, uh, as well as having auto stop on play and record, it actually it actually 
auto stops as well on fast forward i think and rewind there as you've seen so what i have done is i've got my ipad here uh, hooked up to this uh i have a bluetooth fm transmitter and i have got uh it's set up here so that it's coming through on bluetooth on this device this cassette player so i'm going to record a little bit from the audio youtube library it's a song called um i can't remember get out jason farman or something like that but anyway without further ado let's give this a wee short test I quite like that wee tune actually, it's quite catchy and nifty. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. So let's press pause and we'll now try and find um, a station. Of course, we're already on the radio anyway, but we'll try and find some talking. Let's see, that's medium wave. Not much on that. Well, you know, talking about climate change. So we know that four in five people. So as you can hear, there's a lot of a lot of noise there. That uh, sounds like AC bias signal. I wonder if I tried flipping the switch on the back of this, would it make any difference? Yes, it actually did illuminate it there, but actually it cut out the beat signal whenever I flipped the AC bias beat switch. And that's it back on again. Yep, it certainly does the job. Anyway, let's get back to FM. Very quick uh, learners, very quick we'll Record a wee bit of that. Yes, but there is a caveat in that, which is that, that uh, quick sight reading might then result to a sort of unnecessary ease in performing mm. music that actually should be difficult. And, and I think music's meant to be difficult. It's meant to be rehearsed properly. And I'm really glad that at the BBC Symphony Orchestra we have proper rehearsal time for each program. We do uh, two or even quite often three days of rehearsal before we embark on the general rehearsal. So, so it's 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 a great place to work, and I'm so happy here. Yeah. Well, how hard are you going to work then, as you as you make your way through? Let's see now if we can pop a CD in here. Um. I'm not sure what this one is. It's, I think it's one of those pre-recorded ones that I'd done one time. Oh, it didn't actually auto-stop that time. I mean, sometimes it works and sometimes maybe it doesn't. Anyway. I think she's loading up okay. Let's try and press play. No, it doesn't seem to uh, like that uh, particular CD for some reason. Uh, 
Let's see if we can find something else to try. Every time you touch me, I get high. Miss Lena Martell. So that must be for rewind and fast forward those two round buttons on the left hand side. We need to be very careful of copyright here. So it does work as you can tell. And then the top one repeats and rewinds, etc. And then you've got your pause, play and pause, and then in the center, the play is to the right of the display, and, the, or in the, and then on the left, at the bottom, at your stop uh, button. So we'll switch your back now to cassette, and we'll play this back here. Um, as a wee tester, I didn't record from the CD, um, just from the radio there, it was just a wee demonstration of what the CD could do. Yes, but there is a caveat in that, which is that that uh, quick sight reading might then result to a sort of unnecessary ease in performing music that actually should be difficult. And, and I think music's meant to be difficult. It's meant to be rehearsed properly. And I'm really glad that at the BBC Symphony Orchestra we have proper rehearsal time for each program. We do uh, two or even quite often three days of rehearsal before we embark on the general rehearsal. So, so it's, it's, it's a great place to work and I'm so happy here. Well, there you go now. Um, it seems to record very well off the radio. I've noticed now um, that when you record from the transmitter, and Bluetooth that the volume is maybe a wee bit lower on the recording um, but then if you push it up too much there it was distorting there a wee bit but nevertheless uh, not bad at all uh, pretty good recording and pretty um, good wee unit for being um, 24 years old and um, I would like to thank you all uh, once again for uh, watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed this demonstration as much as I've enjoyed recording it for you. Thank you very much indeed. Take care and have a good day, whatever you're doing. Until next time. Goodbye.